Welcome to Andy's How I Did It channel. Today we're going to find out if a new motor will make this cart faster. Stick around to the end because I'm going to take you out on the cart for a speed and torque test after I show you the full motor upgrade process and unboxing. Let's get started. This is what the old motor looks like and when I was rolling down the road I was taking some speed measurements while I was checking the temperature with this laser thermometer. One of the concerns that I heard about these motors is that when you upgrade to 48 volts and you put more amperage through them with the new controller, you can actually burn out the motor pretty quickly. I was pegging 28 miles an hour pretty consistently and it wasn't just the speed, it was actually usage over time that made this temperature climb all the way to 145 degrees and that was only with an hour of using the cart. We're going to start by using our four ton jack to jack up this less than 1000 pound golf cart rear end and we'll go ahead and get our impact wrench out with a 19 millimeter socket so that we can take that wheel off. The thing that you should know, I'm not using impact sockets because those won't fit inside that wheel that I ordered and I have to use standard sockets to go in there and pull that wheel off. But pulling this back driver's side wheel will give you access to the motor. It's not the greatest as if the, you know, whole cart body was off but it does give you better access and next we're going to head up to the battery compartment and take that 9 16 inch wrench and go ahead unscrew that nut i'm using the negative it really doesn't matter but unscrewing the negative so we remove the power completely from the cart now i'm laying underneath the cart and i'm going to remove the four nuts that are on top of the motor holding down four specific cables one of the things you can do if you don't know is make sure you take a picture first so you can see what cable goes where, or actually label the cables. They're A1, A2, F1, and F2 that go from the controller and solenoid to the motor. The two gauge A1 cable comes from the controller and the A2 cable comes from the solenoid. So when you put them back on, you're gonna put them back in the exact same location that you remove them from on this old motor. I'm taking you step by step, showing you each nut that I removed. But before you do that, make sure that you have those cables labeled or a picture taken of them so that you know where they're going. So next up, we're gonna head underneath the cart, taking our 7 16 inch socket and remove three bolts from the transaxle that hold the motor to it. And you'll see I've got one out that's on the forward side. I'm taking one out that's on the very top side of the motor. And then I'm gonna take one out that's on the back side of the motor. There are no bolts underneath the transaxle because you couldn't get to it if you wanted to. It actually goes into the axle at that point. So it's really just these three bolts. And once you get those out, the motor will actually spin freely from the transaxle. It will not fall off because it's on a spline that's connected to the transaxle. So take all three of those bolts out and then next you're going to need to take some snips and cut that speed sensor cable up as close as possible so that you can rewire it back into the new motor later. The motor doesn't come out with just twisting. You actually have to take your finger on part of the speed sensor and kind of rock it up and down and pull it out to take it off. One important thing to know if you don't know this already is these things are incredible incredibly heavy. That motor probably weighs 50 pounds. So next, we're going to open the new motor that D&D Motors sent us. This is the 170-502-1 motor that we ordered as the highest torque motor they made, essentially with the most copper wound in the motor from the ones that they manufacture. I actually ordered this motor on a Monday and had it shipped UPS ground arriving at my house by Friday. The box weighs over 60 pounds, I think it's 62 pounds. I put a link to the motor down in the description below, so if you're interested in picking one of those up, feel free to click on that link and snag one for yourself. While I'm at it, if you're finding value out of this video, please smash that like button and hit the subscribe button to get more content like this. It's actually packaged very nicely, um, stuffed with cardboard all around it. It was wrapped in this nice plastic. And as you can see right there on the end, there's a speed sensor cable with three wires on it. We're actually gonna clip that connector off and solder it into the speed sensor wires. So my first attempt with this, I actually thought that I was going to strip the ends and use crimp on connectors to crimp them together. 
Ultimately, I wasn't really happy with that, so I ended up cutting those off and soldering the connections together, which you'll see in just a second. Here are the two motors side by side. You can see that the D&D high torque motor is actually quite a bit longer than the stock motor that came in. The cable assemblies and nuts are all in the same place. Uh, the splines are exactly the same, but the two motors themselves, one's a little bit longer. So I'm just taking a smidge of grease here and putting in that spline to help the motor slide on a little bit better. Now, this part you're gonna need help for, especially if you're trying to go in through the wheel well. We were able to lift the motor up and slide it over on top of the axle with four hands trying to hold it up. It was still extremely difficult to get in there. The trick here is to get it on the spline and be able to push it forward where it sits there together. It's just kind of an awkward position and kind of an awkward install. For me, this was the most challenging part of this motor install as it was extremely heavy and very hard to lift up and actually slide onto that spline. Straighten up. Just like that. There it is. That's it. That's it. It's on. <laughs> it was going to be easy. So now I'm taking those 7 16th inch bolts and I'm going to take them and put the three back in. I'm going to hand tighten each one of those bolts down. You'll see me do the rear one first and now I'm going to do the one on top second and then I will do the forward one third again not tightening them down yet but just getting them snug i don't want the motor to rotate on me but one of the things to think about here is that if you were to tighten one of the bolts down you could wind up misaligning the motor when you put the second one on it may not line up correctly it's kind of like putting a wheel back on and making sure that you just snug those nuts up first before you completely tighten them down I'm putting that last one on that has the cable tie on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and start working these back on with the A1 and A2, the F1 and the F2. They do come with new nuts and lock washers and they're pretty easy to put back together. You'll see me putting those back on and using the 7 16th inch wrench or socket for that in just a second. It was actually a pretty quick install. In this easy go cart, the black cable goes up top and the gray cable goes down bottom and then the obviously the two two gauge cables that I had upgraded to for higher amperage will go back in their same respective places that they came out of. But again, really important to make sure that you label those so that you can put them back on correctly when you're done with that part of the install. The other thing you may wanna do is use an open-ended wrench on the bottom nut below the connector and then another wrench on the top so that you don't actually twist the post because you could end up damaging the internal components of the motor if you over tighten. So you need to be really careful. So next up, we're going to reconnect that speed sensor. As far as the wiring is concerned, the red goes to the red wire, the black goes to the black wire, and the green wire coming out of the motor actually goes to the white wire that heads back to the controller. I felt a little bit better soldering these connections rather than doing the crimp on connectors with heat shrink tubing on top of them because I feel like in the long term, it's actually gonna protect it a little bit better. Later, I'm going to take some flex loom and actually wrap those cables up to protect them. I don't want any foreign objects flying up in there and knocking the wires loose, so I'm going to put that flex loom on and then wire tie them down when I'm done. Reconnecting the speed sensor will help you take advantage of the regen capabilities of the motor and controller. Now I'm going back in, I'm gonna finalize tightening those bolts that actually hold the motor in place. We're done with that. We're gonna go ahead and throw this wheel back on, tighten it back up. Again, as I mentioned earlier, and if you don't know this about wheels, make sure that when you put those nuts on, you snug them up and you go in a cross pattern. So you go top and then bottom and then left and then right. Otherwise you could get the wheel off balance and then it could lead to uneven tread wear. I went ahead and tightened up all the rest of the lug nuts on the golf cart while I was doing this because I already had the impact wrench out. And lastly, we're gonna go ahead and connect this power back up to our newer Trojan back batteries that we have. And again, this is a 9 16 inch nut that we're using to tighten back down. There was a small spark on this. I think that was partly due to the voltage converter that we have to power 12 volt devices. It's also a good idea to check those fluid levels in the batteries while you're in there. But we're gonna get that snug, we're gonna drop it on down, and we're gonna go out for a speed test. So one of the things that I need to talk about here is that the 
Altrax controller that I'm using and upgraded to the XCT48400 is a 400 amp controller, but it has a specific field map for a motor installed in it. And the field map that comes for the factory motor is pre-installed in it if you order it that way. I think they can change it from the manufacturer, but the salesman at D&D promised to email me the field map and I didn't get it. So since I was installing this on a Saturday, I went ahead and sent them a second email, but didn't get the actual field map until Monday, since you can't just download them online. Um, the initial run of the speed test before I was able to update the field map was substantially less than what I was able to accomplish with the stock motor. D&D promptly sent me the field map a day and a half later and I was able to get it updated. So next up, we're actually gonna take our USB cable and update the field map I received from D&D Motors to the actual field map for this 170-5021 motor that we installed in it. You can see the settings there and where I loaded it. The initial settings were the EasyGo PDS DCS1 and I had to do a quick upgrade when I first connected the software because I hadn't connected a computer to it in a while. So I went ahead and loaded that new field map and you can see the new name of it there and then kept the laptop running with the gauges section open so I could watch it. One of the things the manufacturer told me is that you can't run this motor faster than 5,000 RPMs. So I made sure I kept that limit in when I had the speed controller turned on. And you'll notice here that throughout a lot of my speed testing, I never actually broke much above 41, 4200 RPMs on this motor, even with the throttle down to 100%. And we did convert this cart to a 48 volt cart up from a 36 volt cart. And obviously we updated the controller. So these are the statistics that you're seeing running out of it. The motor itself actually runs a lot cooler with the updates on it. But the fun thing about this is the amount of torque this new motor has. So I took the drone out to do a couple of shots. There's not a whole lot of steep hills around here, but I did find a couple. So you can see them right there on the edge of that overpass. I was able to take the cart up that hill right there a few times to the point where the front of the cart, the wheels actually came off the ground as I was going up the hill because it's extremely steep as you can see. So here's another shot. You can kind of get an idea of the angle of the golf cart going up the hill, but this cart would absolutely climb a tree at this point. It won't do a whole lot in the speed department. We're pretty much capped out at 22 when we were previously able to peg 27, 28 miles an hour. So to answer the question, will the motor upgrade actually make the cart faster? No, not this motor, but it does add a ton of torque to the stock motor that didn't exist before. So overall, I really wasn't expecting the speed to drop as much as it did. And from that perspective, I'm disappointed, but we are going to hopefully have longevity in this motor now. And we have something that is a lot stronger and a little bit safer for everyone to ride on over the long term, since I'm not expecting this motor to overheat like the 2001 EasyGo PDS PXT factory motor that we replaced. I've done quite a few upgrade videos on this golf cart. There's only a couple more things that I'm planning on doing at this point. If you've got other ideas, I've heard lithium batteries and things, feel free to leave those down in the comments below and I will see if I can take them up on my next project. Please check out these other videos if you haven't seen them yet. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and thanks for watching.